Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Thank you very much for coming to today's Big Tech Tuesday. Um, first of all, I just want to hope that uh, everybody's safe, everybody's healthy, and that we're all adapting to this uh, unique time that we're living in. Just a brief overview of today's event. Uh, we're going to discuss natural gas flow measurement in the distribution market. On the right side of your screen, you should see a chat feature. Feel free to chat amongst yourselves, uh, chat to me if you want. Um, and then there's also a Q&A section. Uh, you can submit your questions and answers, I'm sorry, your questions uh, directly to me, uh, or you can send them to the group in the Q&A section. I will hold all questions until the end. Um, therefore, we'll have time to go through the entire presentation. It's not a very long one. We wanna keep it short and sweet today, high level stuff, but my information is at the end of the presentation. So if there's anything you need afterwards or any questions you have, feel free to email me or call me uh, to discuss what we've talked about today and if you're interested in, in digging a little bit deeper. So we'll go ahead and get started. It looks like people are still kind of jumping on, but uh, we'll just go ahead because we only got 30 minutes. So what we're going to talk about today is, as you see from our agenda, is, is who is SICK. If you're not familiar with SICK, we'll do a very brief overview of the company as a whole, the type of products that we offer, um, and the type of solutions that we offer. From there, we're going to dig into the products pertaining to the entire oil and gas um, spectrum for SICK on what we offer, upstream, midstream, and downstream. Then after that, we're going to focus uh, specifically on the distribution market and find out where does SICK fit into those distribution markets? Where do, what products go into that situation? Um, you know, how do we get them in there? What do we look at? What is, what is the product to lead in with to your customers or to um, people you work with on a daily basis? Then we'll dive down in to SICK, the FS500, which is our unique design flow meter for natural gas. Uh, then we'll take a couple quick looks at some field applications, some real life applications, uh, unique applications that, you know, have some pictures that we can actually show you um, and talk through those. We'll have a conclusion, we'll look at everything and um, we'll have time for questions and answers. Uh, very open session, I know that we can't talk with each other, but um, you can shoot me your questions, you can chat, uh, we'll see everything and we'll try to get those questions answered. If we can't get them answered, we'll get them answered to you after the presentation. So who is SICK? SICK is a, a major organization, a major company that is spread throughout the world. Um, we're a sensor company, so we make more than ultrasonic meters. Uh, we do presence detection, industrial safety, analyzers, flow measurement, which we're, with, uh, with you're familiar with. Uh, we're also in the industrial integration space. Uh, we can also help design systems, and not only in our uh, PA group, which is what the oil and gas sector is under, process automation, um, but in that we can build entire systems. So what is a system? A system is a multitude of products of ours and third party that we bring together for one type of application, whether that's unique to your company or something that we can roll out to multiple companies. Uh, we look at motion control sensors, identification measurement, and then new opportunities, new business. Uh, for one example, uh, there is a Amazon commercial that's on television right now that's showing their factory or their, um, their warehouses behind the scenes and, and six sensors are actually in that commercial. You can see them in the background. Um, they will have they, the six sensors there scan all the packages that go through the Amazon fulfillment centers. If you go to the airport, you go behind the scenes to the baggage claim. Uh, most of the airports across the United States and across the world use six sensors um, to scan your luggage. Um, so we're reading barcodes, we're reading labels, we're in food factories, uh, we're in bottling plants. We're reading all of these different unique labels at different speeds and, um, and all of those applications. Uh, we also have safety as well. So safety is, is a major uh, factor for all of us. Um, we have light curtains where if you stick a, a leg or a foot or an arm or finger into an area that's not supposed to have something there, um, it'll shut the equipment down once that perimeter is breached. Um, different types of analyzers for our, our chemical customers, um, 
different uh, oxygen analysts and analysis, and then of course the flow measurement. So as we kind of dive down into specifically oil and gas, which is what we're here today to discuss, our oil and gas portfolio is in our process automation group. So if you look and kind of read this on a left to right type of um, picture, uh, we start at the top and we have our upstream, our midstream, and our downstream sectors. Below that, we give a little explanation of, of what is included in those different streams per se. Uh, we have a production, gas gathering, transmission, which is going to be your pipelines, um, distribution, uh, which is what we'll focus on today. And we'll focus on distribution down the residential. Now, SIC does not have a residential product. Uh, we typically stop at the, the city gates um, and the commercial and industrial customers. So for your upstream, your, your, your natural gas wells, your oil wells, um, your production side, your gathering systems, um, we have the Flow 6 600 DRU, which is a differential replacement unit. Um, it is a fantastic unit for um, well pad application. Um, amazing turndown ratio. Um, there's no moving parts. There's no maintenance as far as changing orifice plates, cleaning orifice plates. Um, it, it takes a slug of water or some type of liquid. That liquid will, be, will then just pass through the open tubing and you go back to your measurements. Moving further down the line into the pipeline, um, kind of our bread and butter, what we're known for is our big FS600 meters. Uh, so we have our FS600 Classics and our FS600 XT. Uh, XT stands for Extended Technology. Uh, so if you're looking at the older round heads, those are our Classics. And then we have the XT, which is more of a rectangular head. Very popular with the pipeline industry. Stepping even further, closer to the customer, uh, we have the Float 6500. Now, the Float 6500 is, is a unique measuring device. It, it's got built-in flow conditioning. It does um, pressure and temperature compensation if you want it. Um, extremely, extremely accurate, two plus one uh, ultrasonic measurement design. Uh, we'll dig a little bit deeper into that here shortly. Uh, and then even further on, it doesn't fit under residential, but if you look at uh, further on down the line um, to your processing plants, your, just your, your different types of plants, uh, you'll have flare gas, and we also have a flare meter, which we can bring in as well. The fantastic part and the great part about all of these products is they work on one software application. They work on Flowgate. So you can bring all of your measurement devices into Flowgate and see them on a global level from one application. So there's no mixing and matching the software. So this is a picture you might be familiar with, but this was supplied by the American Gas Association. Uh, so again, if we start at the left and work our way to the right, uh, you'll see your producing wells. These are your, your, your typical oil and gas EMP type company uh, wells and the gathering systems. Uh, gas moves down the pipe to the compressor stations where it's sent to the processing plant. Once it's done for the processing plant, it obviously is stripped of all different uh, chemical or all of its methane and different AIM types of products. Um, it's then sent down the pipe again into your interstate transmission line. Uh, from there, it can go to a multitude of places. Uh, one of those places is underground storage. So storage is a major, um, <clears throat> it's a major piece of the puzzle for distribution type customers. What we have found is that with our DRU, we are able to use it in that application for underground storage as well, in addition to that using them at the wellhead. Uh, the reason why is the DRU is a very robust, uh, durable device, which allows for that dirty gas uh, to pass through and not clog up any type of uh, turbine um, or anything, um, orifice plates, et cetera. But also, with ultrasonic meters, they're inherently bidirectional. So with the underground storage, you're putting gas in and you're putting gas out. So you're going to want to know your inputs minus your outputs. Uh, to get your true uh, storage levels. And then the same thing, the gas coming out of the ground is not going to be as clean as when you're putting it in. So you might take a slug of, of liquid or you might take some dirt or some kind of deposit. Again, with that ultrasonic meter and the DRU, that's just going to pass through. Um, you may or may not lose measurement, You may, and then you'll go right back to having your normal accurate measurement. 
if we look to the other side, uh, we go down to the factories and manufacturers. Um, you know, it goes through your regulator where it's cut down for your your pressure is brought down, and then it's sent to um, kind of like asphalt plants, uh, different types of brick makers, corn dryers, um, grain dryers, uh, stuff like that. Uh, so you can actually put a FS600 up front somewhere by the regulator, uh, and you can even add a FS500 down to the factory level. So if you have one on the side of the building on a factory in multiple runs, um, even in single runs, um, it's great for those types of applications such as um, seasonal uh, applications for grain dryers, chili dryers out in New Mexico, um, it's on asphalt plants, the hard on, hard off. They, they, they flow gas at high rates and they stop. They flow gas at a high rate and they stop. If you were to use a turbine meter in that application, there's a prone for failure there with, uh, with devices locking up. Um, and your impeller is just breaking or locking up and overspinning and underspinning and, and not catching gas on the low end. With the 500 and the 600, uh, you're able to capture that low flow on the gas, and you're also able to handle that high demand, uh, the high on and off. From there, we get down to a little bit more where we go to another city gate station, which most people are familiar with. Uh, this is going to supply it down to utility pipelines, your LDC type customers. Um, after we bring the pipe pressure down through a regulator, it's sent to these main lines. From these main lines, they can tap in, your utility customers can tap in, and once they tap in, they can send it to um, other houses, they can send it to businesses, offices, hotels, restaurants, um, which is a, a great application for the FS500. The FS500 is fantastic for these downstream distribution type applications because of lower pressures, lower flow rates, um, and capturing some smaller low end um, measurements. So if we take a look at the FS500, it's actually a cartridge style meter. This FS500 does come apart at the dark gray and the light gray, uh, the bottom half of the meter, and with the gas flowing from left to right, uh, it's gonna be aluminum body. You're gonna have pressure taps and temperature taps on there. That way you're able to have uh, pressure and temperature compensation if that's what you, look, if that's what you need. Um, the top part of the meter is a cartridge style, so you can replace that should you need to for, for any reason. And then you'll notice here, <coughs> the inside of the meter. Now the inside of the meter, if you have your gas flowing in from left to right, you'll come in on the right side of the meter, uh, on the picture on the right. Then, let's see if I can get this. So gas will flow in um, here. It will then come up through a set of flow conditioners. And as that gas comes up, it's internal to this cartridge meter. So all of this stuff is going on right here inside of the meter cartridge. So gas is sent up through the meter, meter tube into the flow condition and then, then into a hard U-turn. Now, putting a U-turn in front of a um, measuring point is typically bad, right? So your flow profile is distorted. What we're able to do with SICK is we're able to recreate the, the flow profile. So repeatability is key here. So what we can do is repeat that flow profile as it comes through yet another set of flow conditioners and goes into the measurement chamber, we know what that flow pro profile looks like and compensate for that. We have a two plus one coil design here inside of the measurement chamber directly before the gas leaves the process. So once gas goes through, it then exits the meter on the right side, as you'll see over here, and it will leave the meter there. So that's it. So that, that's the unique design of the FS500, which really is in a category of its own. And as there's no other companies out there that have a meter like this. Now there's some inherent benefits to this, which we will discuss. <clears throat> you have no moving parts in this meter. Uh, so it's not gonna be like your turbine or your rotary meters that you might see here which is your standard meter application for a lot of distribution LDC type customers um, on hospitals, on universities, on, on um, hotels, on 
um, different applications. So it has a very rugged diversification that you can place this FS500 into multiple spaces. Um, so without moving parts, should you have any freeze up um, or lock up, you won't lose gas flow. You don't have disruption of gas flow. If the meter should fail, um, you might lose measurement, you might lose diagnostics, um, but you won't lose gas flow to the customer. How is that important? Well, there's a few reasons. Uh, give you one of them. I was thinking about the other day. If if you're uh, Super Bowl Sunday, um, it's seven o'clock. The game's just getting ramped up. Um, all of a sudden, you, you get a phone call that uh, your your meter went down. Something locked up. Something impeller broke, and the meter seized up uh, on your rotary style or turbine style meter. The hospital's not getting gas. Uh, so therefore, they can't provide heat in the, in the early February months in the Northeast, which is never very warm. Um, and now you, you're having to leave your Super Bowl party to, to go work on this meter. With a sick meter in that situation, you would get a notification that there's an impediment or there's something wrong with the situation. Um, if you have remote communication set up to it, you get an alert on your phone, um, however your system is set up. Uh, but the, the hospital doesn't lose heat. You know, Christmas Day, um, as people are visiting their families, they don't lose heat at the different town border stations uh, where a meter might lock up or fail and therefore block gas flow. Uh, so that's something we're definitely not looking for. Uh, we can always estimate measurement as needed during these situations um, inside of our software or your different measurement applications that you might be using third party. Um, I did include a picture on here that a customer sent us of a meter freeze. Um, never seen anything this bad before, um, but you can kind of see our meter face right here. So this is our, our meter, our FS500 right here. Um, gas should still be flowing through there, albeit it's going to be a little different, but um, you're not going to lose measurement. You're not going to lose gas flow. Very robust meter, unique design in that aspect. So here we have some versatility in applications and versatility in usage, versatility in, in, in installation. Um, so we'll just start at the picture everybody's looking at. Uh, we'll take a look here at this mobile flare setup. So this was sent in by one of our reps uh, doing a, a blowdown for one of their customers on a main road. As part of this slowdown, the gas that was measured our gas that was sent the flare had to be measured and then reported. Uh, so as they did their mobile flare application, as you can see here in the street uh, with their mobile burners, the gas is actually being measured right before it leaves to go down and go into the burners. So you can see the meters on its side. Um, and it was just a temporary application. So our, our rep put this in as part of their service to their one of their customers installed it, was able to report out, and then take the meter out of service after the lineup blown down, um, and, and, you know, backfill and do everything else. And so they were able to have that temporarily um, for this, which would save them a lot of time and gave them very accurate reporting data. If we come up here to the top right, uh, you'll see there's a meter set up in bypass. So if you needed to have some bypass on the line, if you needed to change your cartridge or perform any type of cleaning on the meter, um, you'll have that as well. Um, the other unique benefit of the FS500 is, is it can be installed in a variety of um, situations. So you can put it straight next to uh, a 90 in and a 90 out. Um, you can have a single elbow left, single elbow right. Um, you don't need a straight pipe run for the FS500. Um, because of those internal flow conditioners and the way that we can repeat the gas flow and the flow profile inside of the meter, we are able to give accurate measurement without external flow conditioners, without um, requirements of long pipe run before and after the meter. Um, so another benefit to the FS500, if you have a very tight situation that you need to put this meter in, um, this, is, this is the meter that needs to go in. You can also see in the bottom picture that the meter can be mounted horizontally or vertically. Um, just another versatile feature and function of the meter.
So as we finish up our high level uh, overview of it, we do have time. I budgeted time into this for questions and answers. So um, please, if you have some questions or comments, I know it's very brief and very quick, um, but we're just here to kind of highlight and talk about a few things um, before the 1130 mark Eastern time. Uh, we want to, to leave some extra time for everyone to have their presentations and then get on with their day. Uh, so I, in our conclusion, sick as a company, you know, we're a global company, multi-industry. We have a wide assortment of products, which you talked about on the first slide. And specifically down in our oil and gas sector, we have the upstream, midstream, and downstream sectors uh, that we focus in. On the SIC SS500 product side, um, it's a natural gas meter, unique design. There's nobody else out on the market that's doing this design. It has uninterruptible gas flow, which is extremely important for situations that we had asked um, that, that we need for those different types of situations, such as hospitals, schools, um, et cetera. And the versatility. Now, the versatility of the meter we talked about in the horizontal application was along with the vertical application. Um, this meter, like I said, can be installed in any type of piping setup and, and achieve accurate measurements. Um, you can also use the FS500 in upstream and midstream applications in addition to downstream applications. So if you have a lower flow, uh, lower pressure type application, such as fuel gas for your meters or for your stations, um, this is your meter. This is a meter that you can use when you need to accurately measure that. Um, so uh, all in all, very versatile meter, um, focus on the downstream side. We're all here to talk about downstream today. If you have any downstream questions, please submit them. Um, I see these questions coming through. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go through the questions, um, and then I'll, I'll answer them here on the call so everybody can hear, and I'll repeat the question. If you think of something later, or if um, you want to talk further about a subject, my, kind of, my contact information is here in the bottom left, jeremy.stewart at sick.com, and then my mobile number is 717-471-0399. Uh, so feel free to contact me um, at any time in regards to some applications that you have. Uh, so I'm going to go over a couple of questions now. <clears throat> the first question is, can the DRU, which we discussed earlier, to be used in LDC applications for uh, storage and also at the wellhead? Um, can the DRU be configured as bidirectional? Uh, yes, the answer is the DRU can be configured as bidirectional. There's some installation procedures that are different when it comes to the DRU being used bidirectional. Um, so you will need to just, in a nutshell, add a flow conditioner on the downstream side of the meter, as well as increase your downstream side of the, um, the, the pipe. So you'll need the same piping upstream and downstream of the meter, as well as a flow conditioner on both sides of the meter to bring that in and use it correctly as a bidirectional style meter. Good question. The next question is, what sizes do the FS500 come in? The FS500 is meant to be a drop-in replacement for rotary and turbine meters, so it's going to come in a 2-inch, a 3-inch, a 4-inch, and a 6-inch. In our 3-inch and 4-inch models, we have different um, body sizes. So we have two body sizes in a 3-inch and two body sizes in the 4-inch, and what do we call them, long bodies and short bodies. Um, that way, if your application needs a longer flange to flange uh, to fit an existing meter, uh, if you're replacing one, then we'll, we'll have that application ready for you. Very good question. Okay, another question here. Good questions. I like this. <clears throat> Lots of them. Let me see if i got enough time. I still have some time. So the first question, uh, what is the most common objection to a company installing or purchasing an FS500? Most often it's going to be price, um, you know, but it, it, when discussing with customers and discussing with people, um, it's, it's very interesting on the price because you're buying something different. You know, you can buy your, your everyday Ford, uh, your Chevrolets, but if you look at the FS500, the FS500 is, is more of a, a race car, Porsche, uh, you know, BMW, Ferrari. So it, you wouldn't go to the Ferrari dealership and ask for a price about the, the Ford. You can't compare the two. They're apples and oranges. 
Um, yeah, they're the same thing, they're a meter, but they do so much more different. One of the benefits of the FS500 um, is the electronics. And now you're gonna have um, diagnostic data that shows you about your flow and your noise up, up and downstream of the line. Uh, we can definitely you know, talk more about the diagnostics. It's a whole great session to talk about, but you're gonna know your meter health with the FS500. You're not gonna know your meter health uh, with your other meters, your other rotary uh, style meters. So that's typically the largest objection is gonna be cost, and the cost does come into, it's just a different type of meter. Uh, the next question is, is it low flow calibrated and how low? Um, the FS500 is an out of the box meter. Uh, they're not sent to calibration, such as uh, CZ or TCC. Um, they are dry calibrated at our factory in Germany where they're manufactured. Um, but if, uh, if you're using these in low flow applications and low pressure applications, um, we can read flow down to atmospheric. Uh, so you, you can wave a piece of paper next to it if you have it on your desk and it's gonna read flow. Um, with that flow, you know, it's not gonna be in that measurement range where you have the, the tolerance or the accuracy stated in the brochure, but we can still read that flow. The next question, is there any minimum distance between the FS500 and upstream regulation? That one I will have to get back to you with. Um, I'll make a note of that. Um, I, I, with the upstream, um, upstream regulation, I mean, you're gonna have to cut it. So the next question that comes down is, is what AMC rating does the meter come in? Currently it's an ANSI 150 meter, so it can take uh, 285 PSI maximum. Um, <clears throat> so anything over 285 PSI, you'd have to look at a different um, meter from SIP, uh, DRU perhaps, or maybe a FS600, uh, whatever you might need. But we don't state any minimum distance for the FS500 in the, in the regulation, but we'll look into that and we'll get a little further, but good, really good question. We answer the next question, ANSI rating. So it's an ANSI 150 at this time. Uh, we're looking at some different ANSI uh, builds in the future. Um, is there a Bluetooth capability? Currently, no. Um, that's another uh, piece that we're looking at. Um, kind of going to remote communication. Uh, we have remote communications capability uh, because the FS500 allows for uh, pulse out or RS45 out. So if you take your RS45, Send that down to a Ethernet converter. You can plug that directly into <clears throat> the um, your cellular modem um, into a, a corrector or a accumulator with remote communications capabilities. Oh, well, the, the most famous question that we get every day: Is there a high pressure 500 uh, coming for turbine replacement? The answer is yes. Um, we are doing our research and development on that now. Um, we're looking at the ANSI 300 and the ANSI 600 class. Uh, we still need to do testing. We still need to do more R&D on it, but um, it is on the roadmap uh, to be released in the future. So that's good news, great news. <clears throat> Here's a good operational question. I like this one. Has anyone found a better method of removing the flow conditions for cleaning? The flexible paddle pry tool is challenging. Yes, I agree with you. Um, there's some different options there. Uh, we should definitely discuss that as a group. It would be a good chat question. Um, maybe we should repost that in the chat or if somebody has some uh, tips and tricks that they can share and throw that in the chat section right now. We can all see the chat. Um, but yeah, is, does anybody have any better options for getting the, um, uh, the flow conditions out for cleaning? Great question. I'm sure that there's something out there for it uh, to do that. Um, another question is, does the 500 need to be recalibrated annually? Um, there is no requirement for the meter to be recalibrated. You can recalibrate them in line. Um, you can send them to a calibration lab, um, but unlike your rotary style meters, you're not going to see drift. And so with, that, with not having that drift, you're gonna have a more accurate meter for the longer run. Um, but yes, you can calibrate them in the field based on your uh, PUC regulations, your intercompany regulations, your contracts with your customers. Um, <clears throat> you can do that based on those. But no, SIP does not require that. Uh, 
Uh, another question is, can you recommend a source for spacers that can be used when we needed to add a link to plants or plants dimensions? Yep. Um, you know, we directly usually go to a fabricator for those um, to purchase. Um, and for those of you who might not know what, what he's talking about on this question, um, you know, we do our best to make drop-in replacements. We do our best to get it where all it slants or flange every time, but 100% of the time we can't do it, right? So 99%, yeah, we're there. But the spacers are used to make the flanges connect to the meter. So you can get a different size flanges in order to uh, extend the pipe, extend the flange uh, to bolt up with the meter. Uh, we can look at supplying this for you uh, if you come directly to us at SIP, uh, or we can help assist you to decide where you can uh, obtain those. The next one is there is a division class one div two model. <clears throat> uh, our intrinsic barriers Intrinsically safe barriers still required between the power source slash RTU and the FS500 meter is if it is installed in a class 2 area. Um, I will defer that question to my internal tech team. Um, I want to make sure I get you accurate information on that. Um, don't want to provide you anything that's not 100% accurate or true. Um, don't want you going out in the field in that type of situation with false data. Um, so uh, definitely, uh, I'll get back to you on that one. We, we've documented that question. Um, an important trivia fact just came across. So the gas feeding the spam factory follows, <clears throat> or I'm sorry, the gas feeding the spam factory flows through an FS500. Good to know. So we don't have to worry about a loss of gas flow to our greatest source of protein gel. <laughs> Very good. I didn't know it. No, it was at the spam factory. So, yeah, so there's another application for the 500. It's on these um, these food processing plants, these places where uh, they're using heat. Um, running out of time, I understand. Thank you for everyone's patience. I, I did receive a text with uh, from one of my guys um, going back to the question about any tips and tricks on adding or getting the flow conditioners out. So it says, they have found that adding just a light coat of silicone grease to the O-rings and a light swipe around the sockets in the cartridge greatly helps remove the flow conditions. So using this silicone grease every time that you're um, uh, pulling those parts out, um, putting them back in, definitely after they're cleaned, let them dry, and then put that silicone grease on your, um, on your O-rings and different parts. That way the next time it'll be a little easier to get out. You might even be able to use that as kind of a lubricant now to, to get them out the first time. So I am out of time. I have answered all the questions via chat and chat that have come through. Let me see. So everything I think has been answered. Um, very short time, a lot of information very quickly. Um, once again, um, my information is here on the bottom left of the screen. You can please email me or call me with questions. Um, if you think of something later, you didn't get to it. Um, and then we will uh, we'll go forward with that. And then uh, just feel free to reach out to us. Uh, there's no, no problem whatsoever. We're here for you. If you have any unique situations, unique applications, bring them to us. We'll, we'll figure something out. Um, but again, I want everybody to stay safe, uh, stay healthy. Um, and thank you all again for joining us today. Um, thank you so much. Have a great day.